Hi. We're cursed. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, I'm Mike. <laughs> yeah, I got you go there. I got the. I'm also Mike. Oh. I'm Chris. <laughs> no, wait, I'm Mike. That's Chris. That's Christian. That's Dan. Uh, Chris has received um, support from the Canadian government mm -hmm. for your recordings. Yeah. Uh, is this an existential crisis for us? No. <laughs> I mean, that's another question we get like all the time, and it's fucking yeah. No, man, it's no trouble at all. It's great. It's if they want to give us ton. money, then like fuck, we'll take it. <laughs> you know? If there's like a, a pissed off punk kid that hates that, that wants to give us twenty thousand dollars, fuck, we're we'll take it and put that kid's name in our record for sure. Like we got a factor. I mean, factor. The other thing that people need to know about that is it's not like a bag of money you get yeah. like it's a loan that the label gets which is like you kinda get like half of what you would spend on paper and you spend it and then you get it back and then it comes back out of your record so it's not really free money it's like a loan to do for the production of it or whatever which buys you like a little bit of space like it it gave us the leeway to record a little bit longer and in a good studio that we wanted to go to and there's like, like a lot of a lot of countries in Europe have the same same things, you know, for uh, same kind of grants. Yeah, and it's just I don't know. It's kind of nice. Yeah, we're lucky to have it. Just because Americans don't get it doesn't mean they just can't tell it's us. Americans, how to get man, it. they're jealous. Yeah, <laughs> they're jealous of our communist utopia. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys. <laughs> Are you happy with where religion is today, in 2008? What do you mean? Well, I mean, it's gotten less popular. It's being I think that's true. Uh, denigrated in the media constantly. Uh, every religion pretty much. Is that a good thing? I don't know. I don't know that's for me or anybody to say, man. I mean, just because I've got a really big chip on my shoulder about the shit that I grew up around. I think it's something that people like automatically always use one way or another. And it like, you know, has its ups and downs. Yeah, I think it's good. I don't think necessarily that a world completely without anything like that is ever going to happen because people are always going to lean towards superstition and wishful thinking and all kinds of stuff, but I would like to think that it means people are starting to think a little more for themselves, a little more like reason over, you know? Not necessarily like a world of just total scientific rationalism being a good thing because I don't really agree with that either, but yeah, I think it's changing times a little bit. What are some books that one could, you know, tap into books yeah Dawkins the Richard Dawkins the God delusion I think that's the best like most interesting like new take on atheism that I've read in a long time is that guy's stuff that's probably the one thing I'd say I don't know if you guys we don't read <laughs> just kidding we don't read no <laughs> I don't know yeah, apparently, he... apparently Christian can tell you if there's good porn there was nothing about religion in that zombie porn yeah, there was a minister. Oh, actually, actually yeah, the first, the first, the first the, scene was a minister, sure. a zombie minister, <laughs> making the sweet love to a beautiful young lady who was bent over Dude. a tombstone in a graveyard. Am I crazy or is that a piece of plastic? Jeez, bucket. Um, it, just, it, it looks a little plasticky. Yeah, that's a fingernail. There's a piece of plastic in this. So I'm trying to poison cursed. I'm gonna still eat it. They don't want you to play tonight. They don't want you to play tonight. They're trying to kill. They're trying to. Yeah, sabotage. They've read your blog. <laughs> they can't handle the truth. Yeah. How come you haven't lost the edge over the years? The edge? Yeah. I did. Well, <laughs> funny you should make Big that. time. Yeah. Big time. Lost it in a ditch they did. somewhere. <laughs> I've been looking for it for years. <laughs> if anybody finds Christian's edge, let us know. <laughs> please, <laughs> please give it back before I die. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. Actually, it was Mike's fault. Yeah. Your edge has had a rough go of it. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't lost the edge because totally I'm so close fault. to these guys that it almost counts. Right? Yeah. Well, second hand. Second hand edge. edge yeah. Breaking. Just breathing the air in the van that these guys drive in pretty much constitutes edge break. Where's yours? What? Edge? Yeah. It's on your back. It's on my back ingrained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was thinking. You could get that made into a big whiskey bottle with the old school. <laughs> 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 the size of your whole back. That rules. 
That yeah, I, I gave up on tattoos after that tattoo and realized that tattoos are for lonely people. Oh no! <laughs> Chris, oh. let's be lonely. Oh, we're lonely. Lonely people. Oh no. <laughs> Only the lonely. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. No, it's none. <laughs> Actually, it makes perfect sense. People who are lonely get tattoos. Should be company. <laughs> I take that back, all tattooed people. <laughs> Maybe that's why I have so many chicks tattooed on me. <laughs> so I can get fucking jiggy with me. <laughs> he doesn't even know But it's not really me. It's the blonde. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Uh, Alright, to wrap up, any uh, other bands or artists or authors who you'd like to you know, show some support <coughs> or uh, tell people to check out? Hammerhead, evil twin. If you got problems, just get your fucking tubes replaced, man. What was that record you bought today? It's just all in the tubes right the there. The <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. There's a lot of authors and a lot of really good bands right now. A lot of everything really good, man. I, I don't even know where to start. What do you want to know? Good things we've been reading and listening to, literally? Yeah. For me, lately? There's been a actual like punk and hardcore records in the last couple of years that have been interesting to me. Double Negative is definitely the last straight up like kind of hardcore band that I've really been interested. In. Criminal Damage, Todd from Tragedy's band, which is just blitz love, is great. But we listen to like a lot of different kinds of music that aren't related to that at all. Listen to just as much like old blues or soul or like hip hop or electronic shit or like whatever. But and we all probably read really different stuff too. I don't know. Uh, Paul Oster, I read a lot of, and I've never read him much before. Yeah, you got me into that, too. Yeah. So I, really I think that. we all pretty much respect Vonnegut a lot. Um, Dave Eggers and things like that. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Usually on, on the road, you just bring the power books and we all read them. Yeah. <laughs> we do actually, we're not super smart, but we do read quite a lot <laughs> on the road just because you have so much time and sometimes so much stress, and it's like you can pour yourself into a book. Like J.K. Rowling, like J.K. <laughs> Rowling, great Harry Potter series <laughs> that I love this, so much. You did this guy is it. the fucking mother <laughs> of all. You ever want to see readers. someone read a book in like ten minutes? It's crazy. And you think he's not? You think he's lying? But then you ask him things about the book, and he actually he knows. just has to like touch the book, <laughs> and it all goes in his brain. And I fucking have to concentrate and read like a page at a time, over and over. <laughs> That's why I've gone so far in life, dude. <laughs> 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 it's funny because so it's, it's true. This it's funny because it's true. Our lives are pretty fucked. That's funny. You're fine, man. You're doing okay. You're all right. You're doing okay. We're here. You're we're right. We're you're, right you're right where I want you to be. <laughs> you teach me your secret. The secret. I think. Um, what have you been reading? Well, I've been reading. What have you been reading? I've been reading a. Can I take a, a number of yeah, existential books, uh, like what? Like uh, Paradox Principle, Why More Is Less. Um, basically, it reinforces my values about. Uh, you know what? Huh? There's a really good book that I had to read, and it was sort of related to something for school that I had to do, but it was really awesome, and I ended up reading it. Um, Thomas Homer Dixon is the guy's name. He's Canadian, and he wrote a book called The Upside of Down. It's probably. Do you know it? Yes. It was the most interesting thing I think I read in the last while about natural disasters and how they're supposed to happen and when we try to make them not happen when we make worse things happen by not like letting them the upside of down definitely recommend it to like anybody that can find it it was on my list actually yeah I have a huge list but uh, <laughs> so yeah that one also um, hello I'm special how individuality became a new conformity uh, by a Montreal writer mm -hmm. and you just you know, talk about how everyone's trying to be an individual 30-40% of people have a tattoo or a piercing and that's their, you know, that's the idea of individualism. Or loneliness. Yeah. Or what? That's, loneliness. that's the total individualism right there, loneliness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're something there. Self-total. Yeah. <laughs> a guru. We're cursed. You're on hardtimes.ca. Suck my balls. <laughs> Look at awesome.